How's it going everybody? This is Radish Head and welcome back to another episode of Upland Analysis. The day has finally arrived. Upland, as of a few minutes ago, have just dropped the uh, the neighbourhood boundaries for Los Angeles. So I'm now in a spot where I can give you my collection predictions. I wanted to wait until we had the uh, neighbourhood boundaries because it's way easier to show you on the map where uh, I'm going to be speculating and where a lot of other people are going to be speculating as well uh, now that we've got the lines on the map. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, Los Angeles is actually going to be released in two halves. We're going to have South Los Angeles first, which is going to be on Thursday the 27th of January. And then a week after that, we're going to have North Los Angeles. Now, this video is just going to be for South Los Angeles. And I'm going to do a separate video for my North uh, predictions uh, a bit nearer the time. But... Uh, I will say overall that South Los Angeles is by far the most hype of the two. A lot of the stuff that you think about when you think about Los Angeles is in the south of the city rather than the north. But there are some pretty nice bits in the north and I'm very excited for that release as well. But um, I think it was a very good idea for Upland to release as two separate halves. Now I need to always preface this by saying that uh, I'm just an ordinary player of Upland. I don't have a clue where the uh, the collections actually are. They're all pre-programmed into the blockchain. Only the Upland staff know. I'm not an Upland staff member. These are just my speculations. As you'll know, I always put my money where my mouth is, where I can. I, if I can, I'm going to try and mint these places. Um, you know, but uh, obviously this is going to be probably the most competitive city release that most of you, including me, have ever participated in. I mean, there's, you know, Los Angeles. There aren't many cities in the world that can compete in terms of, you know, price, in iconic factor, in everything which makes Upland a fantastic game to play. The only other thing I'm going to say, and I don't, I've, I never do this, but I just want to bring it up for this one video. Um, if you are watching the game and you are like a brand new player, you either have just joined and you've never put money into the game, or uh, you haven't even created an account yet, I would say uh, if you're interested in Upland for the long term, this is by far one of the best opportunities I've ever seen to get into the game, uh, you know, in a big way. So if uh, you were sort of on the line about mm, maybe I'll put in a bit of money um, just to buy a few more properties, I would absolutely say that Los Angeles would be a really good bet for that. Um, obviously, you know, it's a speculative investment. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. But um, yeah, if you're looking at the prices in comparable cities in Upland, Manhattan, San Francisco, obviously LA is a lot bigger. So I wouldn't necessarily expect the prices to rocket to where they are in Manhattan, you know, right away. But there's no denying it's an iconic city and I think it's going to be very expensive. So um, if you want to mint more than a few properties or if you want to start thinking about uh, you know, going into some of these more downtown areas, which I'm going to be talking about in a minute, you may need to put in a little bit of Upix to really experience Los Angeles to its fullest extent. If you're happy just, you know, minting stuff on the outskirts and just being part of the city, that's absolutely fine as well. But uh, if you really want to go hard and heavy in places like downtown or, you know, on the coast, that's expensive real estate in real life. It's going to be expensive in Upland as well. If you do decide to put in a bit of money into the game and you haven't done so before, don't forget in the description, I've put my referral code. If you type that in, you'll get 50% more UPIX, up to 50,000 UPIX. So if you put $100 in, you'll get 100 and 50,000 in total. You get a 50,000 bonus. I get a 50,000 bonus as well. So everybody wins. Right, on to the collection predictions. I'm going to start at the coast and work my way inland and uphill. Um, and the first one I want to talk about is Venice. Venice is a super iconic part of the Los Angeles waterfront. If you've played GTA 5, you'll know this place. It's, it's exactly the same as it is. This Venice Beach section, just like the, uh, the waterfront that you see in GTA 5. <laughs> so I would say, and in fact, even without collections, 
I want to highlight something. There's actually a few bits of Los Angeles that are independent cities of Los Angeles, and they are not included in this release. And that includes Santa Monica, uh, Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, uh, Marina del Rey, Culver City, and San Fernando. Those aren't in the game, unfortunately, which is a shame because obviously Beverly Hills is super iconic. West Hollywood is super iconic and Santa Monica is also super iconic. Um, and obviously Culver City is, is you know, lots of movies and stuff are made there. But because of that, because we don't have, for example, Santa Monica in the LA release, there's only two neighbourhoods in the southern half of LA that are on the coast. And uh, that's Venice and uh, Playa del Rey. That means that I think that these two neighbourhoods here are going to be super valuable. And if you can somehow get something right on the coast, uh, you know, on the seafront, that's going to be really valuable. I, I have a feeling about that. Um, you know, the, as I said, Los Angeles waterfront is iconic. But uh, I mean, look at look at this marina. Can you imagine if you owned one of these like marina properties? <laughs> there will be boats in Upland one day. Can you imagine how much people would be willing to pay for a uh, a marina property where they can park their NFT yacht? I'm telling you, there's going to be a market for that. I think Venice as a whole has a pretty good chance of making it as a collection. But even if it doesn't, you can't lose minting there. I'm I'm sure of that. Right, just to the east of Venice and Playa del Rey, we have Inglewood. Now, Inglewood actually isn't part of Los Angeles City. It's just like all those other areas which have been excluded. But Inglewood has been very deliberately included. Even on this map, they're showing it in green, look, because it's different. But it's going to be part of the South LA release. Why is that? Because that is where the uh, the NFL stadium in Los Angeles is and it's you know no secret that all of these recent cities have got an NFL collection it's all to do with that massive NFL partnership that Upland managed to secure for that reason i think you'd be a fool to not assume that there's going to be some kind of collection within the Inglewood area and it's going to be something connected to the stadium and if i just zoom out a tiny bit here's the coast here's venice just to the east Morningside Park is the neighbourhood which hosts the stadium. It's this one right here, the Sophie Sofi Stadium, Morningside Park. Anything right near the stadium is going to be unbelievably valuable, collection or not. I think Morningside Park in general has a good chance of being a collection. Maybe uh, downtown Inglewood, just down the road, also has a decent chance of being a collection. Um, as I say... Los Angeles is going to have at least 25 collections. That is more than any other city in the past. I believe Manhattan had 23, which was the previous record holder. This is going to have at least 25. So you've got a pretty good chance of hitting a collection if you're just minting around LA. And to be honest, just minting around LA is just a good idea. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of, yeah, there's going to be some good markups, I think, uh, to be had in LA. So... That's my take on Inglewood. Do If you're interested in the NFL part of the game, the legits, um, definitely be minting something around the stadium. You could set up your shop there and sell your legits. Uh, there'll be a market there for that for sure. Just going in a little bit inland, uh, we've got Palms. Palms is a very high-end neighbourhood. It's got loads of bars, uh, restaurants, it's got plenty of museums as well, and it's got a bit of a connection to the film industry. Now we don't have um, Culver City, which is a massive shame. It's this big conspicuous gap that we unfortunately can't mint. But Palms does have a connection to the LA film industry. So if you're sad that Culver City didn't make it in, but you still want something to do with the films which come out of the city. Uh, Palms is a good place to speculate. And uh, on a similar note, Venice Boulevard, quite a long street. It passes straight through Palms and it goes all the way along through uh, Venice, obviously, <laughs> to the coast. That is a really good speculation for a street collection, I think. So Palms, and then more specifically uh, Venice Boulevard, you can't really go wrong there. 
look at all the marked properties. If there's a whole bunch of marked properties, there's a pretty good chance that you've stumbled across something quite special. We saw that with uh, Sol Solino, Solero Avenue in Berkeley. Look at this. This is on another level. Look at all these restaurants. Yeah, uh, Venice Boulevard. That's a good place to be. All right, so just heading a little bit northeast of Palms then, we have the rather small neighbourhood of Century City. Century City, quite famous. Uh, lots of businesses there, skyscrapers. It's, again, it's got a connection to the film industry. We've got 20th Century Fox is based there. Um, and as I say, it's small. Uh, really, the smaller the neighbourhood, the better. If you can grab something in a small neighbourhood, you're not doing wrong. And Century City is small and it's iconic. Like people, people, you know, it's not like the absolute most famous thing in Los Angeles, but it's, you know, it's, it's up there. Um, it's, if you saw pictures of it, you'd be like, oh yeah, I think I've seen pictures of that somewhere. I think this one has a decent chance of being like a rare collection, to be honest, because uh, I don't think there's going to be many properties in there. The ones which are in there are going to be quite big, so only uh, head over in that direction if you've got quite a lot of Upix to spend, in my opinion. I think the mints could be quite high, but if you do head over there and manage to mint something, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. All right, so I'm just going to zoom out a bit to get our bearings. Uh, we've got, as I've been saying here, here's Palms here. We're going to go along the road a little bit, and uh, Century City is just there on your northwest. We're going to continue along Venice Boulevard, and... Uh, just as we get to the end of Venice Boulevard, look over here in the northeast. This is Koreatown. I think Koreatown has a really good shot at being a collection. It's a super important piece of Los Angeles nightlife. There's loads of bars there. Upland really like to have the kind of Chinatown. Um, you know, we've got Greek Town. We've got we've got multiple Chinatowns. I think uh, they they do quite like that. Little Italy in Bronx. Um, I called that one. So, yeah, they quite like the kind of um, immigrant areas. And Koreatown, not only is it one of those, but it's actually, you know, one of the most unique and interesting of those neighbourhoods that we've ever had. Um, I don't know. If we've, have we ever had a Koreatown before? I don't think we have. So that's like an extra thing in its favour, something a little bit different. Um, having said that, Los Angeles does have a Chinatown as well. That's also a good bet. But of the two, if it had to be one, I'd say Koreatown is the is the place that I'll be speculating the most if I get a chance to mint something in there. Right, so let me just zoom out of Koreatown a little bit. And we are now going to go a little bit north. This is Hollywood. I mean, do I really need to say any more? It's a big neighbourhood. So don't expect it to be an exclusive or even a limited collection. If it's a collection, it's going to be a standard collection because there are thousands and thousands of houses in Hollywood, but it's Hollywood. Come on, even if it's not a collection, people are going to be spending upics to get their hands on property in here. It's... I don't feel like I need to even talk about it. Like, it's Hollywood. <laughs> people from all around the world are uh, are coming to, to to live here and to visit here. Look at all the theatres. On a side note, I'd be surprised if there wasn't some kind of theatre collection. And, uh, yeah, I mean, look at the ones in Hollywood. There's, they're just everywhere, unsurprisingly so. But, yeah, um, <laughs> that is something. And it's worth mentioning while I'm in Hollywood, of course, the most iconic street in Hollywood and probably the most iconic street in all of L.A., Hollywood Boulevard. That is the place, yes, it's the one you're thinking of. It's the one with the Walk of Fame with all of the stars on it. I don't think the bit with all of the stars on it is actually available as part of this release. That's in West Hollywood, and you can see it's quite conspicuously not available to mint. But Hollywood Boulevard itself does, in fact, uh, come into Hollywood regular, and... That's got to be one of my absolute top collection predictions is Hollywood Boulevard. I don't think that's going to shock anybody. I think even if I didn't say that, um, Hollywood Boulevard would mint within seconds. So best of luck if you're trying to get there. And what can I say? If you do go for it and you miss it, at least you're still in Hollywood. At least if you shoot for the moon, you're among the stars. And if I uh, just zoom out a little bit, just north of Hollywood, we've got the Hollywood Hills. 
And uh, again, lots and lots of houses here. And uh, you know what I was saying about um, Alameda? That if you look on your map and all of the roads are kind of squiggly, uh, they're not grids, you're probably in a nice part of town. Well, look at how squiggly the roads in Hollywood Hills are. You know that the houses up here are going to be very expensive. And quite honestly, even if it doesn't make it as a collection, if it does, it'll be a standard collection again because lots and lots of houses in the Hollywood Hills. But they're going to be expensive mints and people are going to want them. Can you imagine building a luxury mansion up in the Hollywood Hills? I'm smiling just thinking about it. I feel like I've been smiling this whole video. I'm going to look like an absolute mentalist watching this back. Um, but, oh man. LA. It's finally happening. I just, man. We're going to make a lot of epics in LA. I'm, I'm feeling it. We're feeling good. Um, so yeah, Hollywood and the Hollywood Hills, both good bets. Hollywood Boulevard, don't don't forget that. And actually, while I'm here, there's a few more really iconic streets as well. Like, not just Hollywood Boulevard, what about Sunset Boulevard? Sunset Boulevard, which goes through Hollywood, is also really famous. I and mean, look at this, Hollywood Palladium. Um, yeah, if, if, you know, <laughs> I don't think you're going to be complaining if you mint something there. That's got a good shot as well. There's at least 25 collections. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta try something, right? Right. So that's me done up in the hills here. I'm gonna head a little bit southeast downtown. I feel like this is another gimme. Upland love doing downtown collections. Almost every city has had downtown as a collection. And actually, if you arrive. Uh, by train to Los Angeles rather than plane, when your explorer gets out of the station, um, he will be wandering around downtown. So it might be a really good idea to send yourself to the station, um, you know, in preparation for the release, and then uh, get off the train when you arrive, because your your explorer will be right in downtown. That's pretty nice. Um but you've got the financial district of all the skyscrapers. Like, yeah, just there's there's not much more to say there. Upland like downtown. The properties there are going to be super expensive. So as I say, you know, maybe only for a certain kind of player. But if you have the liquidity available, downtown you can't go wrong. Mint it and flip it for a massive profit or mint it and hold it and cross your fingers. Got a good chance of being a collection there. And I think that just about wraps it up for my collection predictions for LA. So just to recap, get anything you can in these neighbourhoods right on the coast. You can't really go wrong there. Inglewood, I think, was brought into the game for a reason. And getting anything near the stadium is basically a licence to print up -icks. Um Go for Palms. Go for Venice Boulevard. Uh, go for Century City. Um, anything around Hollywood is an absolute gimme. Um, especially Sunset Boulevard and Hollywood Boulevard. The Hollywood Hills, build your mansion there. Um, <laughs> just be happy. Um, and obviously, uh, Koreatown, super iconic. Lots of night nightlife, lots of commercial stuff there. And downtown. And um, aside from that, any small neighbourhoods, um, you know, you can't really go wrong. So even if they're not like super iconic, um, Carthe, um, what else have we got? Harvard Heights looks pretty small. Harvard Park, all of this stuff. If it's a small neighbourhood, that's not a bad shout um, because people, a lot of people really like being part of each individual neighbourhood and it's especially good, um, you know, selling to people who want to get a treasure hunting map as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've listed, what, like eight, nine places. There's going to be 25 um, across the whole city, admittedly, so um, I do have some collection predictions uh, for the north of the city as well. I'll say that most of them, I think, are in the south. Um, and it is a shame that we don't have access to Beverly Hills or West Hollywood because I would have, you know, called out places like uh, like Rodeo Drive, which everybody's, everybody knows about that. Um, unfortunately, it won't be in the game because, because Beverly Hills isn't in the game. But... Uh, yeah, I'm just checking my notes. Is that everything? I think it is. Right. Thank you so much if you've managed to watch this far. 
Um, I hope that you find great, great success in Los Angeles. I'm certainly hoping I will. Don't forget to use my referral code if you're thinking about buying Upix for the first time. You get a 50% bonus. Oh, and there is Chinatown. <laughs> just, uh, I'm just, just, I'm just doing my outro. There's Chinatown, northeast of downtown. Go for Chinatown. It's also a small neighborhood. Um, so small, I, I missed it. So uh, yeah, Chinatown's a good bet as well. Um, yeah just mint stuff okay go to la and mint what you can it's going to mint out quick i'm starting to think it might mint out within like a month which will be unbelievable for a city of that size there is just a lot of big players who have been saving a lot of money for los angeles and i can see why and if it does mint out quick you better believe that floor price is going to start rocketing so if you are a player with a smaller net worth maybe minting the smaller stuff or the cheaper stuff is the way to go because in terms of markup that's going to be worth more quicker than uh, buying something big but the big stuff could be a collection and you could earn some really good yields uh, on your properties by doing that so you know different ways of playing um hope you find some great success thank you so much for watching uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see similar content to this in the future. And until next time, I'll see you then.